Book 14. The Loyal Swine Herd. So up from the haven now Odysseus climbed a rugged path through timber along high ground Athena had shown the way to reach the swineherd's place, that fine loyal man who of all the household hands Odysseus ever had cared the most for his master's worldly goods. Sitting at the door of his lodge he found him, there in his farmstead, high-walled, broad and large, with its long view on its cleared rise of ground the swineherd made those walls with his own hands to enclose the pigs of his master gone for years. Alone, apart from his queen or old lairts, he built them up of quarried blocks of stone and coped them well with a fence of wild pear. Outside he'd driven stakes in a long-line stockade, a ring of thick-set paling split from an oak's dark heart. Within the yard he'd built twelve styes, side by side, to bed his pigs, and in each one fifty brood sows slept aground, penned and kept for breeding. The boar slept outside, but far fewer of them, thanks to the lordly suitors' feasts that kept on thinning the herd and kept the swineherd stepping, sending to town each day the best fat hog in sight. By now they were down to three hundred and sixty head. But guarding them all the time were dogs like savage beasts, a pack of four, reared by the swineherd, foremen of men. The man himself was fitting sandals to his feet, carving away at an oxide, dark and supple. As for his men, three were off with their pigs, herding them here or there. Under orders he'd sent a fourth to town, with hog in tow for the gorging suitors to slaughter off and glut themselves with pork. Suddenly those snarling dogs spotted Odysseus, charged him fast a shatter of barks but Odysseus sank to the ground at once, he knew the trick, the staff dropped from his hand but here and now, on his own farm, he might have taken a shameful mauling. Yes, but the swineherd, quick to move, dashed for the gate, flinging his oxide down, rushed the dogs with curses, scattered them left and right with flying rocks and warned his master, lucky to be alive, old man a moment more, my pack would have torn you limb from limb. Then you'd have covered me with shame. As if the gods had never given me blows and groans aplenty here I sit, my heart aching, broken for him, my master, my great king fattening up his own hogs for other men to eat, while he, starving for food, I wager, wanders the earth, a beggar adrift in stranger cities, foreign-speaking lands, if he's still alive, that is, still sees the rising Sunday. Come, follow me into my place, old man, so you, at least, can eat your fill of bread and wine. Then you can tell me where you're from and all the pains you've weathered. On that note the loyal swineherd led the way to his shelter, showed his guest inside and sat Odysseus down on brush and twigs he piled up for the visitor, flinging over these the skin of a shaggy wild goat, broad and soft, the swineherd's own good bedding. The king, delighted to be so well received, thanked the man at once, my host may Zeus and the other gods give you your heart's desire for the royal welcome you have shown me here. And you replied, you Meus, loyal swineherd, it's wrong, my friend, to send any stranger packing even one who arrives in worse shape than you. Every stranger and beggar comes from Zeus and whatever scrap they get from the likes of us, they'll find it welcome. That's the best we can do, we servants, always cowed by our high and mighty masters, especially our young lords but my old master? The gods, they must have blocked his journey home. He'd have treated me well, he would, with a house, a plot of land and a wife you'd gladly prize. Goods that a kind lord will give a household hand who labours for him, hard, whose work the gods have sped, just as they speed the work I labour at all day. My master, I tell you, would have repaid me well if he'd grown old right here. But now he's dead if only Helen and all her kind had died out too, brought to her knees, just as she cut the legs from under troops of men. My king among them, he went off to the stallion land of Troy to fight the Trojans, save Agamemnon's honor. Enough he brusquely cinched his belt around his shirt, strode out to the pens, crammed with droves of pigs, picked out two, bundled them in and slaughtered both, cinched them, sliced them down, skewered them through and roasting all to a turn, set them before Odysseus, sizzling hot on the spits. Then coating the meat with white barley groats and mixing honeyed wine in a carved wooden bowl, he sat down across from his guest, inviting warmly, eat up now, my friend. It's all we slaves have got, scrawny pork, while the suitors eat the fatted hogs no fear of the gods in their hard hearts, no mercy. Trust me, the blessed gods have no love for crime. They honor justice, honor the decent acts of men. Even cutthroat bandits who raid foreign parts and Zeus grants them a healthy share of plunder, ships filled to the brim, and back they head for home even their dark hearts are stalked by the dread of vengeance. But the suitors know, they've caught some god-sent rumor of master's grisly death. That's why they have no mind to do their courting fairly or go back home in peace. No, at their royal ease they devour all his goods, 
those brazen rascals never spare a scrap. Not a day or a night goes by, sent down by Zeus, but they butcher victims, never stopping at one or two, and drain his wine as if there's no tomorrow swilling the last drop believe me, my master's wealth was vast. No other prince on earth could match his riches, not on the loamy mainland or here at home in Ithaca no twenty men in the world could equal his great treasures. Let me count them off for you. A dozen herds of cattle back on the mainland, just as many head of sheep, as many droves of pigs and goat flocks ranging free, hired hands or his own herdsmen keep them grazing there. Here in Ithaca, goat flocks, eleven in all, scatter to graze the island, out at the wild end, and trusty goat herds watch their every move. And each herdsman, day after day, it never ends, drives in a beast for the suitors best in sight, a sheep or well-fed goat. While I tend to these pigs, I guard them, pick the best for those carousers and send it to the slaughter. His voice rose while the stranger ate his meat and drank his wine, ravenous, bolting it all down in silence brooding on ways to serve the suitors right. But once he'd supped and refreshed himself with food, he filled the wooden bowl he'd been drinking from, brimmed it with wine and passed it to his host who received the offer gladly, spirit cheered as the stranger probed him now with winging words, friend, who was the man who bought you with his goods, the master of such vast riches, powerful as you say? You tell me he died defending Agamemnon's honor? What's his name? I just might know such a man Zeus would know, and the other deathless gods, if I ever saw him, if I bring you any news. I've roamed the whole earth over. And the good swineherd answered, foreman of men, old friend, no wanderer landing here with news of him is likely to win his wife and dear son over. Random drifters, hungry for bed and board, lie through their teeth and swallow back the truth. Why, any tramp washed up on Ithaca's shore scurries right to my mistress, babbling lies, and she ushers him in, kindly, pressing for details, and the warm tears of grief come trickling down her cheeks, the loyal wife's way when her husband's died abroad. Even you, old codger, could rig up some fine tale and soon enough, I'd say, if they gave you shirt and clothing for your pains. My master? Well, no doubt the dogs and wheeling birds have ripped the skin from his ribs by now, his life is through or fish have picked him clean at sea, and the man's bones lie piled up on the mainland, buried deep in sand his dead and gone. I, leaving a broken heart for loved ones left behind, for me most of all. Never another master kind as he. I'll never find one no matter where I go, not even if I went back to mother and father, the house where I was born and my parents reared me once. Ah, but much as I grieve for them, much as I long to lay my eyes on them, set foot on the old soil, it's longing for him, him that wrings my heart Odysseus, lost and gone. That man, old friend, far away as he is I can scarcely bear to say his name aloud, so deeply he loved me, cared for me, so deeply. Worlds away as he is, I call him master, brother. My friend, the great Odysseus, long in exile, answered, since you are dead certain, since you still insist his never coming back, still the soul of denial, I won't simply say it on my oath I swear Odysseus is on his way. Reward for such good news? Let me have it the moment he sets foot in his own house, dress me in shirt and cloak, in handsome clothes. Before then, poor as I am, I wouldn't take a thing. I hate that man like the very gates of death who, ground down by poverty, stoops to peddling lies. I swear by Zeus, the first of all the gods, by this table of hospitality here, my host, by Odysseus' hearth where I have come for help, all will come to pass, I swear, exactly as I say. True, this very month just as the old moon dies and the new moon rises into life Odysseus will return. He will come home and take revenge on any man who offends his wedded wife and princely son. Good news, you replied, you Meus, loyal swineherd, but I will never pay a reward for that, old friend Odysseus, he'll never come home again. Never drink your wine, sit back, let's talk of other things. Don't remind me of all this. The heart inside me breaks when anyone mentions my dear master. That oath of yours, we'll let it pass Odysseus, oh come back. Just as I wish, I and Penelope, old Let's too, Telemachus too, the godlike boy. How I grieve for him now, I can't stop Odysseus' son, Telemachus. The gods reared him up like a fine young tree and I often said, in the ranks of men he'll match his father, his own dear father amazing in build and looks, that boy. But all of a sudden a god wrecks his sense of balance god or man, no matter off he's gone to catch some news of his father, down to holy pylos. 
and now those gallant suitors lie in wait for him, sailing home, to tear the royal line of Arcesius out of Ithaca, root and branch, good name and all. Enough. Let him pass to whether his trapped or the hand of Zeus will pull him through alive. Come, old soldier, tell me the story of your troubles, tell me truly, too, I'd like to know it well who are you? Where are you from? Your city? Your parents? What sort of vessel brought you? Why did the sailors land you here in Ithaca? Who did they say they are? I hardly think you came this way on foot. The great teller of tales returned at length, my story the whole truth I'm glad to tell it all. If only the two of us had food and mellow wine to last us long, here in your shelter now, for us to sup on, undisturbed, while others take the work of the world in hand, I could easily spend all year and never reach the end of my endless story, all the heartbreaking trials I struggled through. The gods willed it so I hail from Crete's broad land, I'm proud to say, and I am a rich man's son. And many other sons he brought up in his palace, born in wedlock, sprung of his lawful wife. Unlike my mother. She was a slave, a concubine he'd purchased, yes, but he treated me on a par with all his true-born sons Castor, Hylax's son. I'm proud to boast his blood, that man revered like a god throughout all Crete those days, for wealth, power and all his glorious offspring. But the deadly spirit soon swept him down to the house of death, and his high and mighty sons carved up his lands and then cast lots for the parts and gave me just a pittance, a paltry house as well. But I won myself a wife from wealthy, landed people, thanks to my own strong points. I was no fool and never shirked a fight. But now my heyday's gone I've had my share of blows. Yet look hard at the husk and you'll still see, I think, the grain that gave it life. By heaven, ours gave me courage, Athena too, to break the ranks of men wide open, once, in the old days, whenever I picked my troops and formed an ambush, plotting attacks to spring against our foes no hint of death could daunt my fighting spirit. Far out of the front I'd charge and spear my man, I'd cut down any enemy soldier backing off. Such was I in battle, true, but I had no love for working the land, the chores of households either, the labour that raises crops of shining children. No, it was always oar-swept ships that thrilled my heart, and wars, and the long-polished spears and arrows, dreadful gear that makes the next man cringe. I loved them all God planted that love inside me. Each man delights in the work that suits him best. Why, long before we Achaeans ever camped at Troy, nine commands I led in our deep-sea-going ships, raiding foreign men, and a fine haul reached my hands. I helped myself to the lion's share and still more came by L.O.T and my house grew by leaps and bounds, I walked among the Cretans, honoured, feared as well. But then, when thundering Zeus contrived that expedition that disaster that brought so many fighters to their knees and men kept pressing me and renowned Idomeneus to head a fleet to Troy, there was no way out, no denying them then, the voice of the people bore down much too hard. So nine whole years we Achaeans soldiered on at Troy, in the tenth we sacked King Priam's city, then embarked for home in the long ships, and a god dispersed the fleet. Unlucky me. Shrewd old Zeus was plotting still more pain. No more than a month I stayed at home, taking joy in my children, loyal wife and lovely plunder. But a spirit in me urged, set sail for Egypt fit out ships, take crews of seasoned heroes. Nine I fitted out, the men joined up at once and then six days my shipmates feasted well, while I provided a flock of sheep to offer up to the gods and keep the feasters' table groaning. On the seventh we launched out from the plains of Crete with a stiff north wind fair astern smooth sailing, I, like coasting on downstream and not one craft in our squadron foundered, all shipshape, and all hand sound, we sat back while the wind and helmsman kept us true on course. Five days out and we raised the great river Nile and there in the Nile delta moored our ships of war. God knows I ordered my trusty crews to stand by, just where they were, and guard the anchored fleet and I sent a patrol to scout things out from higher ground. But swept away by their own reckless fury, the crew went berserk they promptly began to plunder the lush Egyptian farms, dragged off the women and children, killed the men. Outcries reached the city in no time stirred by shouts the entire town came streaming down at the break of day, filling the river plain with chariots, ranks of infantry and the gleam of bronze. Zeus who loves the lightning flung down murderous panic on all my men-at-arms no one dared to stand his ground and fight, disaster ringed us round from every quarter. Droves of my men they hacked down with swords, led off the rest alive, to labour for them as slaves. And I? 
Zeus flashed an inspiration through my mind, though I wish I'd died a soldier down in Egypt then. A world of pain, you see, still lay in wait for me quickly I wrenched the skullcap helmet off my head, I tore the shield from my back and dropped my spear and ran right into the path of the king's chariot, hugged and kissed his knees. He pitied me, spared me, hoisted me onto his war car, took me home in tears. Troops of his men came rushing after, shaking javelins, mad to kill me their fighting blood at the boil but their master drove them off. He feared the wrath of Zeus, the god of guests, the first of the gods to pay back acts of outrage. So, there I lingered for seven years, amassing a fortune from all the Egyptian people loading me with gifts. Then, at last, when the eighth had come full turn, along comes this Phoenician one fine day a scoundrel, swindler, an old hand at lies who'd already done the world a lot of damage. Well, he smoothly talked me round and off we sailed, Phoenicia bound, where his house and holdings lay. There in his care I stayed till the year was out. Then, when the months and days had run their course and the year wheeled round and the seasons came again, he conned me aboard his freighter bound for Libya, pretending I'd help him ship a cargo there for sale but in fact he'd sell me there and make a killing. I suspected as much, of course, but had no choice, so I boarded with him, yes, and the ship ran on with a good strong north wind gusting fast on the middle passage clear of Crete but Zeus was brewing mischief for that crew once we'd left the island in our wake no land at all in sight, nothing but sea and sky then Zeus the son of Cronus mounted a thunderhead above our hollow ship and the deep went black beneath it. Then, then in the same breath Zeus hit the craft with a lightning bolt and thunder. Round she spun, reeling under the impact, filled with reeking brimstone, shipmates pitching out of her, bobbing round like seahawks swept along by the breakers past the trim black hull and the god cut short their journey home forever. Not mine. Zeus himself when I was just at the final gasp thrust the huge mast of my dark proud vessel right into my arms so I might flee disaster one more time. Wrapping myself around it, I was borne along by the wretched gale winds, rushed along nine days on the tenth, a dead of night, a shouldering breaker rolled me up along Thesprotia's beaches. There the king of Thesprotia, Phidon, my salvation, treated me kindly, asked for no reward at all. His own good son had found me, half dead from exhaustion and the cold. He raised me up by the hand and led me home to his father's house and dressed me in cloak and shirt and decent clothes. That's where I first got wind of him Odyssey as the king told me he'd hosted the man in style, befriended him on his way home to native land, and showed me all the treasure Odysseus had amassed. Bronze and gold and plenty of hard wrought iron, enough to last a man and ten generations of his heirs so great the wealth stored up for him in the king's vaults. But Odysseus, he made clear, was offered to Dona then to hear the will of Zeus that rustles forth from the god's tall leafy oak, how should he return, after all the years away, to his own green land of Ithaca openly or in secret? Phidon swore to me, what's more, as the princely man poured out libations in his house, the ships hauled down and the crew set to sail, to take Odysseus home to native land. But I he shipped me off before. A the Sprotian cut a chance to be heading for Dulichan rich in wheat, so he told the crew to take me to the king, Acastus, treat me kindly, too, but it pleased them more to scheme foul play against me, sink me into the very depths of pain. As soon as the ship was far off land, scudding in mid-sea, they sprang their trap my day of slavery then and there. They stripped from my back the shirt and cloak I wore, decked me out in a new suit of clothes, all rags, ripped and filthy the rags you see right now. But then, once they'd gained the fields of Ithaca, still clear in the evening light, they lashed me fast to the rowing benches, twisting a cable round me, all hands went ashore and rushed to catch their supper on the beach. But the gods themselves unhitched my knots at once with the gods' own ease. I wrapped my head in rags, slid down the gangplank polished smooth, slipped my body into the water, not a splash, chest high, then quick, launched out with both my arms and swam away out of the surf in no time, clear of the crew. I clambered upland, into a flowery, fragrant brush and crouched there, huddling low. They raised a hue and cry, wildly beat the bushes, but when it seemed no use to pursue the hunt, back they trudged again and boarded their empty ship. The gods hid me themselves its light work for them and brought me here, the homestead of a man who knows the world. So it seems to be my lot that I'll live on. And you replied, you meus, loyal swineherd, so much misery, friend. You've moved my heart, deeply, with your long tail such blows, such roving. But one part's off the mark, I know you'll never persuade me what you say about Odysseus. A man in your condition, who are you, I ask you, to lie for no good reason? 
Well I know the truth of my good lord's return, how the gods detested him, with a vengeance never letting him go under, fighting Trojans, or die in the arms of loved ones, once he'd wound down the long coil of war. Then all united Achaea would have raised his tomb and he'd have won his son great fame for years to come. But now the whirlwinds have ripped him away no fame for him. And I live here, cut off from the world, with all my pigs. I never go into town unless, perhaps, wise Penelope calls me back, when news drops in from nowhere. There they crowd the messenger, cross-examine him, heartsick for their long-lost lord or all too glad to eat him out of house and home, scot-free. But I've no love for all that probing, prying, not since some Aetolian fooled me with his yarn. He'd killed a man, wandered over the face of the earth, stumbled onto my hut, and I received him warmly. He told me he'd seen Odysseus lodged with King Idomeneus down in Crete refitting his ships, hard hit by the gales, but he'd be home, he said, by summer or harvest time, his hulls freighted with treasure, manned by fighting crews. So you, old misery, seeing a god has led you here to me, don't try to charm me now, don't spellbind me with lies. Never for that will I respect you, treat you kindly, no, it's my fear of Zeus, the god of guests, and because I pity you good god, the crafty man pressed on, what a dark, suspicious heart you have inside you. Not even my oath can win you over, make you see the light. Come, strike a bargain all the gods of Olympus witness now our pact. If your master returns, here to your house, dress me in shirt and cloak and send me off to Dulichon at once, the place I long to be. But if your master doesn't return as I predict, set your men on me fling me off some rocky crag so the next beggar here may just think twice before he peddles lies. Surely, friend, the swineherd shook his head and just think of the praise and fame I'd win among mankind, now and for all time to come, if first I took you under my roof, I treated you kindly as my guest then cut you down and robbed you of your life how keen I'd be to say my prayers to Zeus. But it's high time for a meal. I hope the men will come home any moment so we can fix a tasty supper in the lodge. As host and guest confided back and forth the herdsmen came in, driving their hogs up close, penning sows in their proper styes for the night, squealing for all they are worth, shut inside their yard, and the good swineherd shouted to his men, bring in your fattest hog. I'll slaughter it for our guest from far abroad. We'll savour it ourselves. All too long we've sweated over these white tusked boars our wretched labour while others wolf our work down free of charge. Calling out as he split up kindling now with a good sharp axe and his men hauled in a tusker five years old, rippling fat, and stood him steady by the hearth. The swineherd, soul of virtue, did not forget the gods. He began the rite by plucking tufts from the porker's head, threw them into the fire and prayed to all the powers, bring him home, our wise Odysseus, home at last. Then raising himself full length, with an oak log he'd left and split he clubbed and stunned the beast and it gasped out its life the men slashed its throat, singed the carcass, quickly quartered it all, and then the swine herd, cutting first strips for the gods from every limb, spread them across the thighs, wrapped in sleek fat, and sprinkling barley over them, flung them on the fire. They sliced the rest into pieces, pierced them with skewers, brawled them all to a turn and, pulling them off the spits, piled the platters high. The swineherd, standing up to share the meat his sense of fairness perfect carved it all out into seven equal portions. One he set aside, lifting up a prayer to the forest nymphs and Hermes, Maya's son, and the rest he handed on to each man in turn. But to Odysseus he presented the boar's long loin and the cut of honour cheered his master's heart. The man for all occasions thanked his host, I pray, you Meus, you'll be as dear to Father Zeus as you are to me a man in my condition you honour me by giving me your best. You replied in kind, you Meus, swineherd, eat, my strange new friend enjoy it now, it's all we have to offer. As for Father Zeus, one thing he will give and another he'll hold back, whatever his pleasure. All things are in his power. He burned choice parts for the gods who never die and pouring glistening wine in a full libation, placed the cup in his guest's hands Odysseus, raider of cities and down he sat to his own share. Mazolius served them bread, a man the swineherd purchased for himself in his master's absence alone, apart from his queen or old lets bought him from Taphians, bartered his own goods. They reached out for the spread that lay at hand and when they put aside desire for food and drink, Mazolius cleared the things away. And now, content with bread and meat, they made for bed at once. A foul night came on the dark of the moon and Zeus reigned from dusk to dawn and a sodden west wind raged. Odysseus spoke up now, keen to test the swine herd. Would he take his cloak off, hand it to his guest or at least tell one of his men to do the same? 
He cared for the stranger so, who ventured now, listen, you Mias, and all you comrades here, allow me to sing my praises for a moment. Say it's the wine that leads me on, the wild wine that sets the wisest man to sing at the top of his lungs, laugh like a fool it drives the man to dancing it even tempts him to blurt out stories better never told. But now that I'm sounding off, I can't hold back. Oh make me young again, and the strength inside me steady as a rock. Just as I was that day we sprang a sudden ambush against the Trojans. Odysseus led the raid with Atreus son Menelaus. I was third in command they'd chosen me themselves. Once we'd edged up under the city steep ramparts, crowding the walls but sinking into the thick break, the reeds and marshy flats, huddling under our armor there we lay, and a foul night came on, the north wind struck, freezing cold, and down from the skies the snow fell like frost, packed hard the rims of our shields armored round with ice. There all the rest of the men wore shirts and cloaks and, hunching shields over their shoulders, slept at ease. Not I. I'd left my cloak at camp when I set out, idiot never thinking it might turn cold, so I joined in with just the shield on my back and a shining waistguard but then at last, the night's third watch, the stars just wheeling down I muttered into his ear, Odysseus, right beside me, nudging him with an elbow he perked up at once, royal son of Laertes, Odysseus, full of tactics, I'm not long for the living. The cold will do me in. See, I've got no cloak. Some spirits fooled me I came out half-dressed. Now there's no escape. I hadn't finished a thought flashed in his mind, no one could touch the man at plots or battles. Shush, he hissed back Odysseus had a plan, one of our fighters over there might hear you. Then he propped his head on his forearm, calling out, friends, wake up. I slept and a god sent down a dream. It warned that we're too far from the ships, exposed. Go, someone, tell Agamemnon, our field marshal he might rush reinforcements from the beach. Thoas, son of Andreman, sprang up at once, flung off his purple cloak and ran to the ships while I, bundling into his wrap, was glad at heart till dawn rose on her golden throne once more. Oh make me young again and the strength inside me steady as a rock. One of the swineherds here would lend a rap, for love of a good soldier, respect as well. Now they spurn me, dressed in filthy rags. And you replied, you Mias, loyal swineherd, now that was a fine yarn you told, old-timer, not without point, not without profit either. You won't want for clothes or whatever else is due a worn-out traveller come for help not for tonight at least. Tomorrow morning you'll have to flap around in rags again. Here we've got no store of shirts and cloaks, no changes. Just one wrap per man, that's all. But just you wait till Odysseus' dear son comes back that boy will deck you out in a cloak and shirt and send you off, wherever your heart desires. With that he rose to his feet, laid out a bed by the fire, throwing over it skins of sheep and goats and down Odysseus lay. Eumaeus flung on his guest the heavy flaring cloak he kept in reserve to wear when winter brought some wild storm. So here Odysseus slept and the young hand slept beside him. Not the swineherd. Not his style to bed indoors, apart from his pigs. He geared up to go outside and it warmed Odysseus' heart, Eumaeus cared so much for his absent master's goods. First, over his broad shoulders he slung a wetted sword, wrapped himself in a cloak stitched tight to block the wind, and adding a cape, the pelt of a shaggy well-fed goat, he took a good sharp lance to fight off men and dogs. Then out he went to sleep where his white-tusked boars had settled down for the night just under a jutting crag that broke the north wind's blast.